My whole life is a lie. Everything is pointless. There is no point. Everything is a pointless scheme. Everything is the matrix. Everyone is just trying to take advantage of me, aren't they? But what am I? What is this? What are you? What are we? Why do you perceive me? Everything is fake. Nothing is real. Nothing is true. <laughs> you guys do you see that we're bearing witness to a very very special bi-weekly ritual by one of the subspecies of homo sapiens that is called the nihilismus existentialis this ritual is all about them spiraling down into the depths of despair really getting low into their self-worth you can recognize this very particular custom of the subspecies by their tendency to rip their hair out, beat their chest, and shout into the void about how pointless everything is. It is a truly magnificent sight to behold, so let's just enjoy it for a minute. Hello there again, my darling humanoids, androids, reptiloids, asteroids, or whatever way you like to identify yourself. Welcome back to Nil Hub. My name is Maria, and here we explore the psychological, philosophical, and spiritual phenomena, as well as the correlations between them, in order to elevate our lifestyle and life quality in a holistic way. So today, I wanted to discuss the so-called path of completion, otherwise the way to find yourself in this maddening and confusing world that we exist in. So what you've just witnessed is an extrapolation of a typical, I would say, life crisis point that at least I would expect the majority of us to at some point go through in our lives, where we question what is the point of existence, what is true, what is not true, who are we, what are we here for, and so on and so forth. Different people go through it at different parts of their lives. Some people go through it multiple times in their lifetime and there's many different ways to get through this experience there's many different schools that teach and can guide you to get through the so-called dark nights of the soul or just the sense of being lost there's also different people that will attempt to take advantage of you when you're at your lowest point through indoctrinating you trying to sell you something but you know what I just wanted to kind of narrow all of those different modalities down to a system, a pattern that I have noticed that this path to finding yourself and getting on with life in a peaceful way tends to follow. And the point of this video is just to demonstrate to you the general pathway and journey that you might be on already, might be approaching or might have just finished so that when you choose a particular school or doctrine or teaching to follow you realize that there is a bigger picture to the whole situation and don't get too caught up in a certain scenario basically to keep you safe so how does everything usually start right is you're caught up in life you're just living your life in a normal regular way caught up in your conditioning following all of the rules adjusting to fit in now the thing is in order to fit in, obviously, you have to reject certain parts of yourself. And therefore, those rejected parts and instincts of yourself that are deemed inappropriate or taboo in the society or community that you live in and try to adjust to become your shadow unconscious self. But so what can end up happening as a consequence of you going through this process of self-rejection is that your whole concept of self ends up getting split into a variety of personas, whether conscious or unconscious. And you can watch more about this in my previous video, where the shadow personas can end up leading you to self-sabotage, as whatever you repress, whatever aspects you deem unworthy of yourself still want to shine through. They still have an agenda. And then obviously the self-sabotage leads to what you perceive as failure and therefore as you keep sabotaging yourself and failing you end up judging yourself more and more 
deeming yourself more and more unworthy to be in the position that you're in in society in whatever community you are your self-worth drops and you begin to view yourself as more of an observer on the outside of the world as if all of the things that are happening around you are happening to you you begin to victimize yourself the more you self-sabotage now obviously we don't victim blame here because i perfectly also can relate to being in the situation where through self-sabotage you end up feeling like a victim of life like you're at the bottom of the well however in truth typically that image that you have seen at the start is essentially what this whole process of consistent self-sabotage self-detrimental thoughts uh, false beliefs about the self and all of those negative patterns can lead down to so you just do carry on losing all hope and faith the more bad things happen to you until you hit that rock bottom which is the existential crisis or once again the ego death but as the saying goes the only way from being at the bottom is up so once you do hit rock bottom something usually happens that leads you to end up deciding to improve yourself so on the path to self-improvement to self-development you end up joining some new communities because you have detached from those old communities that you ended up feeling unworthy to be a part of that you ended up feeling on the fringes and on the outside of so you find something new to relate to whether it is self-development groups certain spiritual beliefs religious groups anything of the sort so you start learning some practices you start learning some theory something about psychology something about well-being health and you end up feeling that you are actually getting some of your worth back but only as long as you keep working on yourself and the more and the harder you work on yourself the better so what ends up happening is that at this stage you end up having a very very wobbly and fluctuating sense of self-worth because it is fully at this point dependent on your ability to achieve on your ability to strive for being better and for how much you have managed to do on your productivity so if you're lucky to be conscious enough you do at this point end up catching on to the fact that you are measuring your self-worth through your productivity and ability to achieve some perceived imaginary goal and it is great to be conscious and to realize that however the issue is that this can lead to another self-sabotage where you begin to therefore reject that community because you start once again feeling like you have fallen a victim to the grind to the achievement and instead of taking responsibility for your own inability to find your own inner self-worth you blame that community and decide to in some way isolate or distance yourself from it therefore once again leading you to being on the outside to being in isolation and alone but honestly it's not that bad a thing because if you were conscious enough to realize that you have self-worth issues therefore you're most likely conscious enough to realize that you actually need to work on them once you become isolated from the new community that you have discovered so once again it is a great time to begin to explore yourself before you go back into joining some self-development group or community so now this is the interesting part because after diving into so so many different spiritual self-development philosophical communities different doctrines so on and so forth i have found that essentially what all of them end up leading to is this one teaching that unites them all it is that you are one with everything so in your search for self-worth for your inherent true self you either way come across these teachings in one way or another whether it is through physics that you discover that and understanding that everything is just energy and waves and strings or quantum fields and so on and so forth whether it is through kriya yoga explaining everything about the atman or christianity or islam talking about us just being a part of this beautiful creation so either way 
pretty much any doctrine you will find even the nihilist doctrine which speaks of everything not being real and everything just being an illusion and there being no point in some way talks about everything being one and therefore as everything is one you are a part of that one so in trying to find yourself and going through all of these different teachings all of these different schools you kind of come to a conclusion that even if you don't find the inherent sense of being united with everything you at least initially get a mental understanding that you essentially have no escape but to be a part with everything it is pretty much just a big ego here at this point that tells you that you know yeah you were being self-deteriorating and detrimental with low self-worth and stuff but in a way that was actually your ego perception that you're that special that you're on the fringes on the outside and so so different from everyone else and that nothing and nobody understands you and really life ain't that deep like once again you're not special you're a part of everything and you can't really escape it you can be as miserable as you want to be but it's really just not productive but now the thing is did you hear that word once again productive so if you are conscious enough at this second or third or fourth round of trying to find self-realization you begin to understand that you need to somehow reframe that perception that you need to be productive because otherwise once again you end up spiraling down into finding your worth purely through being a productive and active individual so for a time you can just end up giving up just lay back and do nothing as you realize that anything you do if you try to achieve something that means you're still measuring your worth through your productivity and achievements and therefore following all of these doctrines and so for a time this doesn't necessarily happen to everybody but you can end up being led down the path of just giving up for a time just fully letting life happen to you because you're sick and tired of everything and so after living in this passivity and apathy for a short or a long amount of time eventually you do realize that you can't just lay about all day and do absolutely nothing that you can't just never pursue anything and if you can then that is great because that means you have literally achieved enlightenment and well done but if you realize that you cannot then that means you're still human and not really ready to ascend to the nirvana yet but because in this particular scenario we're kind of in the bottom of the pit in terms of the height of our frequency chances kind of are that even if you did end up just fully fully giving up for the rest of your life you wouldn't actually get into nirvana because getting there kind of takes work and practice and through being passive it is not the exact path to get there so either way eventually you end up having to make peace with the realization that this whole idea of you striving and trying to achieve something is not just stemming from what society tells you but is rather just a natural human drive and desire to live because as long as you keep existing and keep living in this physically perceived universe anything you do even if you just absolutely passively lay on your couch leads to some consequence so whether you act or don't act there is going to be consequences and therefore any of those consequences end up being achievements whether intentional or unintentional so as by existing you end up creating certain consequences and therefore achieving something intentionally or unintentionally you can realize that as long as you exist you might as well choose to make your achievements intentional but this time because you have now been through this whole journey of realization and self-derealization attachment and detachment you can realize that you have free will to choose what goals and achievements you actually desire to create and actually begin to establish them for yourself 
instead of listening to some very, very particular and linear teaching or doctrine that doesn't lead to your particularly desired outcome. However, this whole concept of free will, the thing is, it is still conditional. It is in a way deterministic because whatever choices you make with your free will were in a way predetermined with what context you grew up in, what genetics you have, how your life has formed. So whether you're acting from your conditioning or against your conditioning, free will is not really free. So the key to taking power and acting consciously is to realize that you can choose how you relate to your conditioning and you can choose what conditioning you end up taking on here on forth. And by choosing to continue to exist, you essentially agree to keep proving to yourself perpetually your own worthiness and your own existence through the evidence that you see. And the evidence that you see and perceive is the consequence of your actions, otherwise your achievements. So the key to embracing the self as parts of this universe as being one and not on the outside and the fringes of the universe is to kind of let your ego go in the sense that oh i'm so special i don't want to follow my conditioning i don't want to ad adhere to the matrix and blah 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 no it is instead to realize that as long as you still physically exist you are parts of many, many different layers of matrix, whether it is societal matrix, whether it is the matrix of nature, whether it is the matrix of physical uh, entities, atoms, the universe, anything of the sort, everything is just different layers and fractals of a variety of different matrix that we exist in. So you can gain unity with yourself and achieve peace by once again, realizing that instead of rejecting all of those matrix, all of those concepts and conditions, you can pick and choose what conditions you would like to adhere to within your own capacities and abilities in order to achieve the goals that you, based on your own conditioning and predetermined history, end up choosing. So the best way to go through this embrace process is essentially to obviously choose the things that would lead to the most peace and harmony within yourself and the outer world, leading to the best possible consequences that one can create. In other words, known as being moral, ethical and good by the matrixes or society's standards. And so you end up living on in peace as long as you can know that you're honestly acting with the best and the purest intentions in accordance with at least the information that you have so far gathered from your existence and your conditioning. So as long as your intentions and means are pure, then the self-judgment and self-detrimental patterns and thoughts can end up subsiding. Because why would you judge yourself if at your core you know that you're truly trying your best and doing your best, the best that you can, to lead to the best possible consequences that you can see. There can't be judgment of that. If you truly mean well, you can't judge yourself for meaning well. So you regain the sense of having a point in life, you regain inner peace with the fact that you are this physical creature that has to strive and achieve something as means of proving to itself that it still exists. And while you're at it, choosing and picking your particular actions, you might as well just choose to do the best that you can. And therefore, you're a good human being for just being the best that you can be. Simple as that. So I really hope that this video made sense to you. If you truly understood it, this should hopefully unravel a lot of inner turmoil that you have within yourself. So I hope you enjoyed and I hope that whatever situation you're going through right now, whatever stage you're in, whatever consciousness level you're at, you just do the best that you can so that at least your 
values and your morals are in alignment with your actions on your path to unraveling and discovering how to exist within this maddening and crazy physical perceived fake existence. So have a good day and enjoy your life. Bye bye.